Hello, hello, hello. It's Kathy Bedell at MyStampingSpot.com coming to you today with Thankful Thursday. I'm going to grab a sip of coffee here. How are you today? This great card was sent to me by someone on my team. How cute is this? So this was a stamp for, set from last year. This is clearly the gingham ribbon. And this little wreath is in the annual catalog. It is, uh, it's designed really, I think, to be more of a Christmas set. Anyway, how adorable is that? I love it. She even put the spiders hanging on the inside. So thank you, Laurie, for that. That's a great card. Okay. I thought today, hey, Christina. Jonah, how are you? I thought today we would try something called stack, cut, and shuffle. I've never done it. Hey, Marsha. Kay, thanks for being here, you guys. Um, I haven't done it, but we're going to try it. So I brought this. This is from the uh, mini catalog. This is throughout the year, and it's actually kind of a great set. I really overlooked it until yesterday I was digging for some sets and I went, oh, I forgot about that. So I don't know if I'm going to use the thank you, the birthday, the best of luck. You mean so much to me. We'll see what it looks like. Um, but, but so much good in this set. So the All About Autumn DSP is back in stock. And so this is what I thought I would use, and I am definitely going to use that piece. So we need, hey Peg, Marsha, how are you? We need three pieces. Um, try to envision this. I don't know if that would be as good. We need three pieces that we are going to cut at the same time, and we are going to shuffle them, and kind of, I'm trying to envision what it's going to look like when it's cut, so I think I'll go with that piece. Carla, Fran, how are you? Oh, awesome. I will, I absolutely will. Fran, I will um, I will reach out to you. So I think we'll do the pumpkins, the fall leaves, and you know what? I think I'm going to use this side with the gold in it as opposed to this piece. So like I said, this is back in stock, temporarily anyway. Um, and you know what I realized? I think I need another piece of vanilla. I don't think I brought enough vanilla over because we're going to make three cards at once. So let me grab a third, a second piece of vanilla, and I'll show you what we're going to do. Have you seen this technique? I saw it once. I'm hoping that there is, oh, look what I did. I used white to die cut my labels huh, instead of vanilla. Well, I will use the white temporarily, but you're going to want to go with the same color. Um, so I saw this technique once. I've never tried it, and I thought, no time like the present, right? So I have two pieces of thick vanilla. Whoa, my blade just fell off. I am going to score them at four and a quarter. And then I'm going to cut them at five and a half. And there goes my blade. So let's put it in another cut. Had to pick the blade up, though, before the dog got at it. Okay. And we're going to cut it at five and a half. Did I say five and a quarter? Five and a half. So we have four card bases. Ooh, this, uh, blade, this blade isn't as sharp. But we only need three. So now we are going to do, um, let's see, three and three quarters. Is that what I want to do? No. I'm going to do three and seven eighths because we're going to cut the cardstock at three and three quarters. So three and seven eighths. Ooh, very ratty. Hold on. Going back to the first one, putting that blade back in. That was not a pretty cut. My That blade was dull. So we are going to three and seven eighths. 
and we are going to cut that by five. Nope, five and one eighth. Have I confused you yet? I will put it on the blog, I promise. So three and seven eighths by five eighths. And I need one more. Five and one eighth. <laughs> Not five eighths. <laughs> if I only had a brain. <laughs> Yes, the uh, ribbon is back in, and I am hoping that the dots come back in. I don't think Joelle's hoping, because she was kind of like, yeah, we don't have time to cut that before the holidays, but I said, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll make time. I am bringing over the copper ribbon that goes with that, with this DSP. So, all right. Eight and a half by five and a half, score to four and a quarter. This is thick, very vanilla. I have four of them. We only need three. I now have three pieces. Uh, cut five and one, five and one eighth by three and seven eighths inch wide. Now I'm going to take my three DSPs and Bruma has it. If you have a directional piece of paper, and it's going to be in the middle. You need to make sure you know which way is up. I'm not choosing it only because I don't think this image would be very nice in what I'm doing. Even though that was my first. Hey, Lynn, how are you, Brenda? Okay, so now we're going to cut our DSP at three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. Don't throw this away. This would be good to put on the envelope flap. Maybe we'll do that after, although I didn't bring it over. And I did five and one eighth. So this is going to be five. So basically the DSP is one eighth inch smaller than the uh, copper clay mats that we cut. <clears throat> and don't throw these away. These are great for the inside. Okay. So, it is my understanding that there are no specific cuts to be done here. The only thing that would be specific is if you had an image that um, that you didn't want to cut in half. Let's see here. Like, for instance, say this pumpkin, you wanted it to be intact, you'd have to cut around that pumpkin. That's a, for instance. I'm trying to think of what a DSP that has a a image specific image okay hold them together and you're going to cut on a diagonal and again there's no specifics to this okay so I'm going to cut those three I'm going to make sure these other ones stay together we're going to pull these off put them off to the side I'm going to move this up here and I'm just going to make another cut and again there's no measuring. There's no right. There's no wrong. When you are done, like that. So now, we're going to lay out our three mats. And we basically are just going to do layer by layer. We're going to fill the three mats. Like this. And then, like that. That's that's going to be the backdrop. We'll put the greeting over the point, whatever we decide to do. Like I said, I accidentally did white. I'm going to show you a trick with that as well. I'm looking for an adhesive here. I did not come prepared to play. I'm sorry. So all I'm going to do is I've only left one eighth of an inch border. So we're not leaving very much here. Very, very small. Like that. This piece is crooked, however, because that's the way my day, that's the way my week is going. I hope my friends in Maine are safe. I hope all my friends in Maine are safe. 
Okay. And then we are actually going to butt the edges of the DSP right into each other. So once the first piece is down, it's kind of easy to put the second piece in because you want to line up this edge and this line so it goes much easier. This one's a little pulled away because I tried to pry it up. And you know what else might work really well here is a white liquid glue, like a Tombow liquid glue. I'm using tape for speed's sake, but you might be better off using a liquid glue because you could shift the papers left or right a little bit while the glue is still wet. Okay, so it's not hard, it's just getting that first piece so that you're happy with the alignment of it. There we go, I really love this copper piece with the metallic, it's so pretty. Uh, oh, let's go in this way. <laughs> so then you just fitting it together like a puzzle. And I'll do the third one. This is a quick way to do three cards. Ba-bing, ba-bang, ba-boom. And you are done. So because I can tend to be a little... I'm not fussy about a whole lot, but I am fussy about colors. Um, I don't know why a frayed edge sometimes doesn't bother me. But if I have vanilla card base... I'm, that white will drive me bananas. So I actually think, since the dies are right here, I may run through some different shapes once we decide what shapes we like. Okay. That, my friends, is going to go on the card bases. Grab my bone folder. Boy, the vanilla, thick vanilla cardstock has such a nice weight to it. I think even nicer than the white. I think they're supposed to be the same weight, but it really feels very substantial. Okay. And let's add these. I'm not going to wrap a ribbon around it. Whoop. I am just going to put some kind of a loop on it. So I can adhere my card front to my card base. Like so that's pretty quick and easy. Yes, glue. Yes. Have you made these before? Is that why you're recommending the glue? Have you done it with the glue before? Does it make it um, a little easier to shift to the left or the right? Okay. There we go. All right, so here was my tip on this. I used the stylish shape dies, and I used the nested essential dies. Mine are a mess. But my tip was to cut two at a time. And you can snap them, and they come right apart. However, I think I am going to do that with my mini machine. And I apologize. I try, try to be good and have these things pre-done, but sometimes you just don't think and you make a mistake. So I'm going to have to trim this a little. So I'm not going to get all the shapes out of this. So we might have to make some decisions here. Now remember, you want to make like an E shape. So I'm going to do, I think that's just too big. Oh, maybe not. Whoa. I'm going to do a big and a little circle. And I will have two of each. If I get them placed correctly. Boy, they just barely fit on this. I know. Them off center and they will fit better. There we go. 
Oh, you've done a lot of these. Love to see some. Did you do all the same DSP stack or did you choose different DSPs for it? I'm curious. Okay, and I don't know if I'm going to get these two nested essential dies on the same piece, but I'm going to give it a go. We'll see. Then we can decide what we want for greetings. So there's my circles. Putting that off center. Oh yeah, I will be able to. How about that? How about that? Ooh. There we go. A little brute strength today. Okay, sorry to make you watch me do that. I don't I don't like to do that, like I said. I like to have it done for you. But, you know, sometimes the stars just don't allow. Don't align. I guess I'm having trouble talking today. So, again, double up on your paper. Even if you don't need to for this card, then you'll have a little stash. And they're really tight, and the easiest way to get them apart, just snap them. And they'll come right apart. Can you hear that? It makes a little clicking sound. And they come right apart. Okay, I'm looking at size first. I think I like the smaller ones, quite honestly. So, I'm going to get my copper clay ink. And I know I want to do this thank you because it's Thankful Thursday. DSP families automatically match. Yes. Yes. Very quick and easy Christmas cards, right? Very quick and easy Christmas cards. I never did it before. It's quite fun. All right. I'm going to try to stamp this straight. The first time I stamp a stamp, I use the edge of a paper and see if it comes out straight. And then I know if I need to go left or right. So that was pretty straight. So let's hope we can do it here. There we go. There's one. Circles don't matter, right? <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> nope. That's what happens when you press too much. I'm going to take this one. You just need to tap on your ink pad, and I know better. That's the thing. Mm, do we want something else? I think I'm going to just stick all to thank you. Okay. That's my copper clay ink. I am... Grabbing some dimensionals because I wasn't smart enough to bring them over. And I am grabbing speckled dots. I love, this is my favorite embellishment in the catalog right now. And sadly, I wish it were available. Okay. I'm going to put these ones aside. Maybe I'll use those tomorrow. These little strips, I like to put them on the inside of the card. And it doesn't ma really matter which one goes on which card because all three patterns are on all three cards. So I kind of just space them about a quarter of an inch around. Like so. And it's just a little something on the inside. A beautiful fall leaf would be pretty on the inside. Oh, I just found some. You know what? These were left over from the class. 
So the problem with that is I, I, it's not that I wouldn't do it without the dots because I could just lower the price, but I wouldn't have the dots for the cards, the way they were designed, the directions are all written. Um, and if the directions aren't accurate, sometimes it can be a little tricky for people. Sometimes they don't quite understand and... Um, I think I really need to wait for the dots to come in, to be perfectly honest with you. If I had even just enough dots to do enough kits, I would gladly do that. But I don't think I have enough dots just to do the kits alone for the number of people that have requested kits. So, okay, here's my little secret. Make kind of like a bow, like this. Where's my scissors? But I'm not actually tying the bow. And I actually think I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Oops. Dots are not expected back until November. And I don't know how much demand for the class there will be at that point, to be perfectly frank with you. We'll have to see. I want to say like, oh, EGADs, maybe November 13th, they're expected back. So, uh, once Thanksgiving rolls around, there may not be a high demand for the class. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find the midway point just about on this ribbon. And I'm going to put a glue dot there. And then I'm just going to kind of make an X over it. Like that. And I'm going to put one more glue dot on the back. And that I'm going to kind of attached to my to my label like that oh a little crooked there we go so I'll show you that again so I'm just gonna kind of make a small bow roughly and I'm gonna put a glue dot in the middle and I'm kind of putting it oops off center in the middle it's kind of I don't know if you can tell or not it's kind of sticking up a little bit that's so that this side can catch the lower portion of it like that and this side can catch the upper portion of it like that and I'm gonna flip it over put a glue dot on that back and that is going to attach. I like to do it at an angle to the center of my label. And then that, because the dimensionals are already on there, is going to go on my card. And then I'm going to trim these just a little bit. Like that. Okay, one more label. You might want to do this on a silicone mat because your glue date dot could stick to your table or whatever you have going on, whatever you're working on. Flip it over. So this kind of gives us the effect of a bow without the hassle of tying a bow and the bulk of the bow, which is key, not having that big knot under your tag. There we go. Trim this one just a little bit. Okay, maybe I'll embellish with a few of these um, maybe I'll just pop one of these on each one just for a little extra. So these were cut from the class and they were extras 
just to add a little something. And I'm doing three different colors. Okay. And I think this color might get lost. So I think I'll do this white metallic one. I'm choosing to put the metallic one up. And I have a little ink blob there. So I'm actually going to cover that by putting it off to the side a little. Okay. Look at these up. Scoop those up. Put those back in my bag for another day. And we'll add some bling. And then we'll talk about the envelopes. All right. Let's see. I think I'm going to go with some mauve. Boop. Sometimes you just have to scrap it. Well, I'm not getting the dot with it is the problem, the glue. Probably because I'm not using a good tool. And I think I'll use a green on this one. And I'm going to use a bigger dot there. Maybe we'll use one of these tan ones over here. And maybe we'll put tan one up there, and this one needs something too. Maybe we will go for, uh, maybe we'll go for a green one over there. Okay, so that's that. Now, if you've never done an envelope, let me show you how that's done. This, you're definitely going to want to use some liquid glue. And I'm going to sit down, so if you comment, I'm not going to see it for a minute. The easiest way to do this is to just add a little bit of glue. You don't want to go bananas because you don't want it leaking out, but you do want it to go right to the edge. So I kind of pipe some and then squiggle it up and down to get close to the edge. I'm not actually squeezing it out on that edge once the initial is down I'm kind of spreading what is there so I'm kind of doing a loop maybe a quarter inch away from the edge of the envelope and then I'm kind of squiggle in the center and then I'm just taking my tip and redistributing what's already there I'm not adding any more glue I'm not pressing down because you don't want a goopy mess like that, okay? Then we're gonna take our pieces of DSP and we're gonna line it up with the edge of the envelope, with the fold of the envelope. And you just need to shift left or right to make sure that you cover the curve of the envelope. Okay, so let me put this one on. Like this. And we'll do one more because we have one more piece, the pumpkins there. And again, I'm going like a quarter inch out, putting a bead all the way around, doing the center, and then no glue's coming out. I'm just using my point to distribute that edge a little better so that it's nice and tight to the edge of the envelope without being enough to ooze out of the envelope. And then my last piece... I love the white pumpkin on this particular piece of DSP. <clears throat> I think it's so pretty. Okay, then if I knew where my cover was, I'd put my cover on, but I don't know what I do with it. <laughs> You're shocked, aren't you? You're shocked. Okay, then we're just going to come in and the glue will dry, but we're just going to carefully trim around the edge of the envelope and guess what if you mess up and you cut into the vanilla a teeny bit no one's ever gonna know <laughs> no one's ever gonna know if it's not exact so it's quite all right you don't have to spend a lot of time exacting this you can see the lumps of glue I probably should have dispersed it a little better when it dries it'll be better it's because it's wet it's almost like translucent through there but again, 
if you accidentally nip the vanilla as you're going around, it's okay. It's, oh, I got a little too wide right there. I'm going to narrow that up a little bit. And we're going to do the last one. And I'm going to do one last thing when I'm done. And I probably could have done this before I decided to trim these envelope tops. I'm just going to take my bone folder and make sure my glue is very well distributed across the top. And again, I'm doing it after. You could do it before you trimmed. There we go. Much better. This just helps to keep your um, flap from being lumpy at all. We don't want lumpy flaps. No lumpy flaps allowed. <laughs> uh, silly. Okay, so there we have some beautifully decorated envelopes. They're not envelopes, they're envelopes. And some very pretty cards to coordinate with them. And we have used throughout the year. And truthfully, wouldn't this make a very quick and easy thank you gift? Oh, oh, oh. I totally covered up my dimensionals with my ribbon. So I am going to place a couple more on here just to make sure it's good and secure. Wouldn't this make a great thank you gift? You know, put them in a little um, cellophane bag. And you could give them to a coworker, a teacher, any number of things. So there we go. That's what I have for you today. All right. Thanks for trying this with me. Thanks for being patient with me while I figured this out. Because like I said, I saw a video about a month ago and I thought, I'm going to try that. So today was the day I tried it. You all were my guinea pigs and I'm grateful for that. And uh, I will see you tomorrow for Fun Fold Friday. I do have something kind of fun coming up. And um, my actually, we had a team meeting last night. And one of the girls on my team, uh, in my retreat, she was going to teach this class. And she was away with her husband and had bad reception. And that's when my husband Larry filled in. And... Um, so she was showing it to us last night on the team, and I said, send me the measurements. That'll be a great fun fold Friday. So come in tomorrow, because I have to tell you, I've never seen a fold like this before. She calls it a pop-out. I don't know. I'm not even going to pretend I remember the name of it. But I have it all written down, and we will try it tomorrow for the first time. And uh, I hope you all have a great night. And if you're in the state of Maine, I hope you all have a very, very safe evening. Be careful all. Don't forget, these are the make and takes. If you spend $35, the code's up above. Thank you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.